Hi, everyone, and welcome to this abstract algebra course. Um, by way of orientation, uh, let me just say a little bit about what abstract algebra is. Uh, we all have learned the basics of regular algebra, concrete algebra, uh, in um, middle school and high school, and it's a standard tool in all of the mathematics that uh, we've all done up to this point. And when we think about algebra, I think um, the, the ideas that, that come to mind are things like polynomials and solving systems of equations and um, word problems where you have unknown quantities. And uh, all of these things are, are different aspects of algebra. Um, at their heart, they rely on really simple mathematical operations like addition and multiplication and um, basic properties of number systems like integers and rational numbers and real numbers. Um, abstract algebra, which uh, is a subject that I guess had its origins maybe in the 18th century, uh, is based on the idea that um, we take a lot of these properties that we have relied on uh, in solving problems and by the, by the kinds of properties I mean are, for example, the distributive law, the associative law, the commutative law, which um, operations like addition and multiplication satisfy. And we look for other, con other sets of uh, objects uh, where there are operations which satisfy some or all of those same properties. And then we try to study those situations just relying on what we can deduce from these basic properties. Now, it's a huge subject, and you may have taken linear algebra. So linear algebra focuses on uh, linear functions and linear maps and um, vector spaces. In, but it, that's a kind of abstract algebra, particularly if you start with the notion of a vector space and the axioms which define it. In this course, we're going to focus our attention on uh, one part of abstract algebra, which is called group theory. Um, in some sense, a group is the simplest, useful, abstract, algebraic object. And uh, a group is basically a set which has one operation on it, and that operation has some basic properties, like it's um, associative. And um, we start with, with this notion of a group, and it turns out that from some very, very simple uh, initial axioms, we can find out huge amount about what um, what groups have to be, how they have to uh, how they have to behave and how they have to be related to one another. And what makes this interesting is that at the heart of group theory is the idea of symmetry. So um, you're all familiar, for example, with a equilateral triangle or a regular or a square or um, maybe a circle. And these are objects which possess um, a lot of symmetry. Uh, for instance, you can take a triangle and you can rotate it a third of the way. If it's an equilateral triangle, you can rotate it onto itself and it's, it's congruent to itself after you rotate it. And squares can be flipped end for end and uh, they remain the same square. And it turns out that this oper these operations related to moving geometric objects around can be understood in a very deep way in terms of group theory. And so in some sense, group theory is the underlying language of a lot of geometry. Uh, group theory is also useful in other contexts. Um, it comes up in a lot of applied fields where issues of symmetry are important, for instance, in chemistry. Uh, it comes up in quantum mechanics, again, because of issues of symmetry. And it also comes up in areas where the symmetry is less obvious. For example, some of the most uh, important cryptographic methods which uh, are used today have at their heart some basic properties that are derived from group theory. So in this course, we're going to start by looking at some examples of groups from things that we already know, which turn out to be groups, then carefully define what a group is. And then this is going to take us on a long journey uh, of discovery of how much we can extract from these very, very simple axioms. Uh, we're not going to focus so much on applications. It's This is a course in uh, in pure mathematics, if you like. 
So we're going to get a lot of practice with the ideas that we uh, studied in math 2710 um, and lots more opportunities to practice uh, the ability uh, to construct proofs. And so um, in the end, uh, by the end of this course, you should both know a lot about group theory, but also really have gotten an immersion in one particular part of abstract mathematics that's driven entirely by the ideas of definition, theorem, and proof. Um, and that's uh, the pattern that will hold in other advanced math courses that you might take. Make sure that you uh, look at the course homepage where uh, I talk about how the course is going to run, how the course is going to be graded, and um, I look forward to uh, an interesting semester.